Welcome back to Beyond Mortgage. I'm Dan Trinidad, and I'm really excited to have Patrick Galvin as our guest today. Galvin is an accomplished presenter, TEDx speaker, author, and, and chief galvanizer of the Galvanizing Group, which is an awesome name, by the way. <laughs> um, a speaking, coaching, and consulting company in Portland that helps high-performance companies and teams galvanized repeat and referral business through better relationships. Welcome. Thanks, Dan. It's a pleasure. Patrick, it's, uh, it's really great to have you. As we, we discussed a couple minutes ago, I really enjoyed your TEDx presentation. And what I'm really interested in is hearing about you and how you evolved into, really got into uh, building a, a phenomenal coaching company and how you ended up speaking on you know, TEDx. And, and tell, tell us your story a little bit to give our listeners kind of an idea of who you are and where you came from. Well, I'm really glad that we have a chance to talk about my passion today, which is business relationship building. And I'd like to say that I learned everything, you know, through going to the greatest schools. I went to a business school. Uh, I studied marketing. It was a really good business school in Arizona called Thunderbird. And when I came out into the work world, I thought I had all the answers in terms of what I needed to do to be successful. And at the time, I thought it was all about advertising. I thought it was all about marketing. And I went to work for a couple of different companies. Uh, in those sales and marketing roles. And then I had an opportunity to join my family's furniture business and uh, <laughs> took over our marketing budget and thought, okay, all I have to do is look and see what the other guys are doing and just advertise better than them. And I just became a check writing machine, spending lots of money, uh, thinking that was the answer because everyone else in my industry was doing it. And lo and behold, all that advertising didn't result in much. It brought in some business, but it didn't justify the $150,000 we spent in my first six months on marketing, which was our entire annual marketing budget. I remember my dad standing next to me saying, so where's the flood of customers as a result of all your marketing brilliance? And <laughs> it, it just didn't work. So then I realized, okay, I've got some issues here. And this was back uh, 15 years ago. And I realized that it wasn't about marketing. I was in some business groups. And when I talked to people, regardless of their business, whether it was mortgage, real estate, any product or service company, those who were doing well were relationship builders, and I was not. And I realized that I needed to concentrate on relationships. So I started doing it in the furniture world. Uh, we saw a big turnaround in our business, and I realized that this was something that I was not taught in business school. It's something that most people don't learn in business school. They either learn it and succeed in business, or they flail like I was flailing. And until they get the message about the importance of relationship building and then start implementing it, you know, that's when things start changing for them. Wow. So, so when you talk about establishing relationships, where do, where do you start? I mean, so that's a big, I mean, do you start behaving in a different way? Or is it different questioning? How do you go about it? Well, I, I, think, I think it can be overly complicated. And I think that we just have to remember some certain truths. So a friend of mine is Bob Berg, who wrote a book called The Go-Giver. Mm -hmm. uh, he inspired me to write in the parable format. And Bob said that people do business with and refer business to those who they know, like, and trust. So it's all about that big overarching thing that you need to do. Now, it'll be different from industry to industry, but there are a lot of folks who tend to be very transactional. You know, we were chatting about mortgage. Um, right now, mortgage is hot because refis are really big and lots of people can, um, you know, really benefit from, from um, doing their mortgage. But you know what? That's not rocket science on the part of a lot of mortgage folks I know are just picking up the phone, talking to people who are That's calling it. in because rates are really low right now. But the smart mortgage people are realizing that this is a moment in time. And that if you want to succeed over the long haul, you need to focus in on your referral partners, your realtors, your connections. You need to focus in on your past clients because when rates go back up again, and they will, it's just a question of when, when that refi funnel starts to dry up, well, those who are going to be continuously successful are those who have not forgotten relationships. And I'm not picking on mortgage. This is something that a lot of people tend to do. When, when, when business is strong, it's easy to just take it for granted. But the reality is that if you want to be in it for the long haul, you have to really focus in on your key connections and focus in on de delivering value. And my basic premise is that uh, there's seven essential rules for relationship building in my book, The Connector's Way. The most important one is number four, serve others without consideration for how you're going to benefit. Really be of service. 
And it's not a uh, paint, paint by the numbers, you do this with everyone and they're gonna be happy. No, it's about keying into what their interests are and how you can add value to that particular relationship. And so, so if you're alone, and I'm giving this presentation to our loan officers every week in our sales meetings about, about the long-term aspect. The, the senior loan officers know that it's a very short-term game. Um, that, that we're, we're, I mean, we're blessed with, like you said, the refinance business right now. But big picture, it's the relationships. And I, I guess I may have gotten it from Bob's book because I teach the same thing of they, they need to know who you are before they're going to like you and they're going to have to like you before they're going to trust you. So what is that process? So if you're, if you're a loan officer that's been in the business for less than a year and you've been you know, thrown into transactional business where you get, the, get a chance to make some money, um, you're starting your career, what would you recommend they do um, to get to know people? Do they start by being of service to people and getting to know them that way? Or I mean, what, what process would they go to? Go through? Yeah, so um, I think about my own experience as a, I've, I've never worked in the mortgage industry, but I've gotten mortgages before. And I couldn't tell you the names of the first people that yeah. I work with in the mortgage field. Uh, because I was honestly just a number for them. My, my, my home purchases, condo purchases were low dollar value compared to some of their other clients. They didn't think of me as an important person. Wow. So most of the time I was sort of passed along to processing people. And then I never heard from those mortgage folks again. Um, but it doesn't have to be that way. So on the client side, on your customer side, there was a mortgage person who I met through uh, uh, a business networking group. It was actually a service organization business networking group. And he took genuine interest in me as a person. We bonded around the San Francisco Giants. I grew up in San Francisco. He grew up yeah, in Southern Oregon. <laughs> yeah, Giants fans. And uh, so, so he made note of that. And it was really cool. About three months after we worked with him on a refi, I got a card from him in the mail. And it said, hey, Patrick, I was in a baseball card shop the other day with my son. Couldn't resist. And thank you for your business. And in that card, there was a baseball card of a very obscure San Francisco Giants pitcher from the 80s and 90s, Greg Minton. I, I know you're Greg. a Giants fan. He's not a big <laughs> name. He's not going to go to the Hall of Fame. The monetary value of that card, if it's a quarter, that's probably on the high side. It might be more uh -huh. of a 20 cent <laughs> card. But I thought it was the coolest thing that he remembered this conversation we had. He took genuine interest in me. It wasn't a big dollar value gift. And it was all of a sudden it's like, wow, I'm a real person to this, to this loan officer. We have become good friends. I've referred multiple clients to him. I'm sure his commissions for my referrals have been well over 10 grand, probably much more than that. I don't, I, I don't know exactly. Um, but he, doesn't, he didn't do that because he wanted my business per se. He did it because he took a genuine interest in me as a person. Now, all of a sudden, I wasn't a number. And I have learned as I've gotten to know Kevin over the years that he does this with everybody. And he has a thriving mortgage business, good times or bad, high, reef, high, high, high mortgage rates, low mortgage rates, it doesn't matter. Right. Because he's built those connections with his customers and he does the same thing with realtors. So he finds common points of interest um, and he bonds with his realtors over common points of interest. It's not rocket science. It's just basically being interested in the other. And I, and I think that's the key. It's that being genuine. So if, if you truly care about the person you're serving um, and, and you want to be, if you're doing it with the intention of, I want to get more business from this person, I think that defeats the purpose. I think when you're, when you're um, talking to somebody and you take genuine interest in them and you, you hear, oh boy, they likes the San Francisco Giants and whatever, you know, triggers a, a gift to you, um, a, a note to you, a call to you. Um, I think that's, that's the difference maker. We try to teach that to our loan officers all the time. I've got, we've, we've got a couple loan officers in our office that do it naturally. They, they genuinely care about the experience that the home buyer or the person obtaining a refinance, they, they care about that experience, not because of the commission they're receiving, not because they're going to receive more referrals and more commissions. They just want to make it, they want to get somebody into their first home or they want to see the excitement on their face of, of, of obtaining a lower payment. And then 
what happens, as you know, is their business starts growing because of it. And if they, if they stay focused on the person and not the transaction, they tend to really do well. Uh, too many people in our business start counting the money and realize, oh my gosh, I, this is going to last forever. And, and it just doesn't. It, yeah. Rates tick up a little bit. Refinances aren't available anymore because for the most part, everybody got to refinance. Well, now what are you going to do? If you did like your friend, um, now you're still going to get business. It doesn't matter where rates, rates are. And even if I'm not in the market for a new home, he's top of mind. So someone says, hey, who do you know on mortgage, Patrick? It's like, yeah, you got to go with Kevin. The guy's great. He really cares. Well, and statistics will show that you, you know, over the next seven years, um, will do something. You'll get a refinance. You'll buy another property. You'll move up. You'll, you'll downsize something. And he'll be the guy you call without a doubt. Um, no shopping. So, I won't shop. Right. I, I get it. So is, is that, I'm sure that it's not as simple. Well, maybe it is, but so you know who he is, you like him. You probably don't like him because he gave you a card. You like him because why? I mean, what, what creates that? Because I honestly think that there's a human connection there. And I, I, I really think that when you think about what's happening, well, let's just st stick with mortgage. So you've got Rocket coming in, you've got these uh, financial people who are going to disintermediate the process. Uh, they will take some market share. There are some millennials who happily won't talk to anybody. Um, but there are a lot of millennials who I know, and there are a lot of people who aren't millennials who value the human connection. So the, the card story, in my case, it was a card that made an impact on me. And someone else, you'd send them a baseball card and they'd say, well, that's stupid. I'm not even into baseball. The right. fact is he, he took the time to get to know me. And that's really the key thing is it was tailored to me. That is the differentiator is make that person feel special, whatever that is. And I can't tell you that, you know, here's the silver bullet, but I think that, I think it's a, a silver bullet philosophy. I, I like what you said, Dan, if you do it to get something, it's just not going to work out because people can see through it. So you don't do it for the quid pro quo, but when you're, honestly looking for ways to build connection and rapport and stretching yourself to do that. The person who you think will become a great referral source, maybe it's that superstar realtor out there who you've been cultivating. They have other relationships. They won't become your big source, but another realtor who's an up and comer is going to value the time that you put into that relationship when all the other yeah. Uh, LOs were focused on the, on the big fish and that up and comer could become the next big fish in your market. So it's kind of going out there with the right mindset. And it's a lot easier to live with a mindset that allows you to be consistently good at developing relationships and let the chips fall where they may. You have to have faith that it works out because I have seen an industry after industry, personality type after personality type. It doesn't matter. Extrovert, introvert, doesn't matter. If you focus in on relationships, you're going to come out winning. You just can't know necessarily who you're going to win with, but you will win. That's the key. Well, and so then the last component of that no like trust is trust. And so you also have to deliver um, what the customer, maybe over deliver what the customer wants. And it, it sounds like yours did. Um, and I, I think that's, you know, it, it's, it is step one, step two, step three. You can't go into somebody and, and they're going to like you. you they got to know who you are and what you're about. Over time, they start liking you. And then you start doing some business together. Well, now you're obviously to the point now where you trust them. You'll refer your family, friends, coworkers to. Um, and I think that's where we all want to get to. So, so another key, another key though to point out is do the right thing, you know, be of service. But, but here's the thing a lot of people miss. Clients would ask me, you know, Patrick, we are a service centric business, but we're not getting as many referrals as we think we should based on the, on the evaluations we're getting from our clientele. And it wasn't until I went to a word of mouth marketing association conference, there's a conference for everything in America. So <laughs> this is a, uh, an association of PR advertising folks. And Prescott, he shared this really interesting stat, which was 50%. 50% of all people, in order to refer, have to be specifically asked for a referral. And it's not on the bottom of your email saying referrals are the highest form of compliment that I see a lot of realtors have. It's having a conversation. The key is how you ask. So when you um, have delivered great service, you've exceeded expectations, and you're looking to grow your business, 
here's the key. You've got to be willing to go out to your client base and say, look, I've really enjoyed working with you. I, I, I work with a lot of people buying homes. You guys had your act together. You got me the paperwork I needed. It was really fun with you. You were just like the exemplary home buyers. And I would love to have more people like you. Um, not just more people, but great clients like you. If you know of anyone, I would really appreciate it because I'm not the big mortgage person who has all the billboards all over town. I'm, I'm building a relationship centric, centric business and it would just, it would be such a huge help. So, you yeah. know, co-op people, but have a conversation and build them up in that conversation. Let them know why they're special. So even if they don't refer to you, they're going to feel really good about your value. And, and don't just have a script. Be really true to the, that relationship. So find the two or three things in your mind that made that person, person such a good person to deal with and call them out for it. Because I'll tell you what, it doesn't happen nearly enough. I have a lot of people I would refer that I don't because honestly, I haven't been asked. And I was guilty of it myself. I came back from that conference and I thought, wow, I have one client who I love um, and I've never asked him for a referral. And I, mm -hmm. I went to him and he said, it's about time. And I said, what do you mean? Because I just thought you had more business than you can handle because you've never asked me. So this is embarrassing. I'm the, I'm the marketing guy and I wasn't doing what this professor advocated. In fact, I was doing exactly what he said people do when they don't get referrals. They assume if they're good, they're going to get referrals. But the reality is if you don't have the conversation, people assume you have more business than you can handle or for one reason or another, you're just not looking to grow. So wow. you've got to ask. Wow. So do you think that there needs to be something in common with that prospect or that client? So for example, loan officers work hard to develop relationships with real estate agents, but oftentimes it, it, there's a stumbling block because there's not a, there, there, there's not a lot in common between this realtor and this loan officer. Do you think it's important to have this common ground? Like, children at the same school or um, same types of interests, going to the same church, um, you know, something like that to uh, get in the door? I, you know, I, I, think, I think you want to dig as deep as you can in getting to know that person. I'm just amazed at how many people, you know, reach out to me that have never looked at my social media, haven't watched any talks I've given. Um, there is so much out there about the people that we want to connect with. We should all yeah. consider ourselves intelligence officers. And we need to realize that we can't be all things to all people. There are certain personality types that we might uh, be just more comfortable with. It might be based on religion, ethnicity, uh, male, female, age. I mean, there's all these different things. So I would say it's better to be a bigger fish in perhaps a small pond than to try yeah. to be of service to everybody. And really, you know, pick people who, who, who resonate with you. And it's gonna, it's gonna vary from person to person. But I, I see a lot of people, in, you know, getting outside of mortgage and real estate who to, to try to do too many things. They, they join too many organizations. They try to network with too many people. And when you think about how you've been successful, in my case, I can count five people who've been responsible for 70% of my business wow. over the last 10 years. When I keep going back to, and how did that person come in? How did that person come in? So I think a lot of people confuse themselves with big numbers. They think that success is all about connecting with as many people as possible. And I think it's about going in deep um, with fewer. people. Yeah, with, with a smaller tribe. 